one of the other key differences I find with um, with the zonartic type plants, I mean, we've got an example here. If we can pull this one out, Steve, I hope you don't mind me. No, no, you, you carry on. Pulling your plants out as, as they're crammed together, so I'm not. Is that we've got these very long flowering stems, and one of the uh, one of the key things that I particularly like with them is that they've got a very long flowering stem, and they're, they're very good as cut flowers. A lot of pelagonias, of course, have got relatively short flowering stem, but zonartics tend to have a longer flowering stem, which makes them absolutely ideal as cut flowers. Uh, but they've also, in this particular variety, which is. Mekong, Rushmore Re Mekong, if I can get it out in one word. Um, very large individual blooms. I think this is very characteristic. The individual florets of the, uh, of the plants are usually really quite large. And this is what makes them very diverse and very different to other pelagoniums. Um, they've got these very large individual florets. If we can, if I just get a little bit closer, just show them there. Um, you can see very, um, very large individual florets. This is, you know, very double as well. Each individual one, very open, uh, and are really fantastic as um, as individual cut flowers. So uh, they make a brilliant uh, cut flower stem, uh, and are ideal for um, growing on uh, and using for any kind of uh, sort of situation. Uh, they grow very, can grow very bushy. Uh, grow up fairly low, um, they do make very good, I find, sort of basket type plants as well. Uh, very long flowing stems, but it is the colour. The colour is very unique to the zonartic, um, uh, zonartic type plant. So uh, maybe you do want to talk about one or two of the other bits, yeah. like the leaf and things well, like the, that, Steve. The, the leaf is a key component. Um, I don't mind taking a leaf off. But as with the Stellas, they have a, their own leaf. Um, as with the Formosans and the Zonals, they have their own leaf. The, the Zonartic also has its own leaf, which um, it borrows from Pelagonium articulatum. Now, because these are crossed with Zonals, they're not quite the same, but the influence of the Zonartic, of, of Articulatum is, is key in identifying these plants. We have seen some plants where some hybridizers have, have, have ended up with a halfway house. They've ended up with these beautiful flowers, but they've also got zonal leaves. Uh, and obviously they are not a Zonartic flower. They, they are actually in, in, in the zonal camp. So you can get zonals with these flowers now, but uh, the Zonartic, which Cr Cliff actually created has to have these leaves. The other thing you'll notice is that a lot of the uh, buds start off as yellow. I don't know whether you can see that um, in the video, but uh, just here you can see that they have yellow buds. And they start quite interestingly as yellow, but they do tend to fade, unfortunately. But you know, you do get these lovely colours. Well, yeah, I mean, that starting is yellow, but the actual open bloom is just as spectacular as well. It's got shades yeah. of pink, I mean, this particular variety, but... Um, well, what's interesting about that is that by choosing uh, Pelagonium, uh, when he first did his breeding, he used Millfield Gem, and Millfield Gem um, actually has these spots in the flower. And, those fl and, and what's happened, because that is obviously the granddaddy of the lot, right, yeah, it yeah. actually comes out in the crosses as you, at, you know, at any stage, you don't quite know what's going to happen there. So, um, yeah, I mean, Steve's touched on uh, the importance of, of, the, of the sort of two elements. There is the bloom, uh, but the leaves are, are vitally important in continuing the, uh, the zonartic breeding. So, um, should anybody do any breeding, um, of zonartics or get seed to pull off, it's vital that you've got this sort of cut leaf which will have more or less a um, zonal banding in it, but it must have this sort of cut, sort of, I don't know what you call it, cut yeah, sort they, of leaf. Yeah, they're going to be, they're going to come in varying degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but 
it is important that you can actually distinguish distinguish the leaves from a pure zonal so, leaf. Yeah, right, okay, okay. Yeah, because some one that so I think one that's got a very distinctive zone is the hot pepper one. Uh, is it rush the unicorn, unicorn hot pepper? Yeah. That's got quite a distinctive zone, dark zone in yeah, the that, leaf. Yeah, that, that was bred in um, that was bred in Sweden. Um, okay. and they, they have quite a, a rich heritage too. And Cliff actually shared some seed with them back in the day and uh, they, they've obviously developed those themselves um, and they're, they're starting to become available in the, in, in the UK but they are certainly available in Sweden. When I started uh, my hybridising of these I, I held on to them because Cliff wondered whether I could actually get them recognised as a commercial opportunity and, and, and uh, he would make some money out of it. Um, unfortunately, uh, they weren't seen by the big players as being something which they would actually want to sell because it was unwieldy, I, I, I imagine. Um, but they've now sort of found their rightful place yeah, with, right. with collectors. As, a, as they're a separate sort of entity, yeah. I suppose, officially. Um, yeah, I mean, so there is different growth. This one's obviously a little bit more open, but um, whatever variety that Well, it might could be, be the... It's Rushmore... It's Rushmore Thames. Thames. Uh, right. What you'll notice, well, you might not have noticed, but this the range of Rushmore plants that I've released... Um, yeah, Rushmore, I suppose we just add, is your sort of breeding line yes, of... Uh, it's, it's my prefix that prefix. I use on all, all my plants. Um, and when I gave these to Fibrex to release, they, they wanted names, I just had numbers originally, and so I decided to name them after, after rivers. So these are known as the Rushmore River series. Right, okay. Um, worldwide rivers, I suppose. Worldwide yeah. rivers, yeah, because these... We've got these, Mekong, <laughs> so we, yeah, it's yeah, we, a bit further away than the Thames. We yeah. have, yeah, we've got the Mississippi, uh, we've got the Missouri, and we've got some, we've got some others all over the world. Um, but again, on this plant, you can see the influence of Millfield Gem coming through with the, the spots and the colours and the flashes in, in the top upper petals. This plant here, I've just managed to acquire um, from Australia. Uh, and this is the last, and you can see this yellow here, this is the last Zanatic that Cliff ever raised. And, uh, oh, it, before his death. Before he died. Right, yeah. gosh. Okay. Uh, and it's and it's it's known as Lara Valma, and I think Valma was the um, the second name of his wife Joan. Um, this is a beautiful little lemon uh, carnation type flower, and I think you can probably see this is quite a compact small plant, yeah. and they do like to be cut back hard. So the one that Dave was looking at earlier, saying it's a bit open, if that was cut back hard, it would start to shoot lower down and I I'm sure it could be trained into some form of show plant. Um, one of the things Cliff tried to do, and I think he started to succeed with this plant, is that he was trying to get some dwarfness into, it, into them. They're still, it's still got long flowering stems but what he was trying to do was to get the influence of the zonal into it so that he could actually um, make them easier to manage and take up less, less room in the greenhouse because they do take up a lot of room. But this, this is a particularly beautiful plant and you can see in the new, sh in the new buds just how, how intense that yellow is. Um, it is and there's a, there's a, the buds in particular have got a, a very good green basis. So, I mean green in uh, flowering plants is Relatively unusual, would not it? Which is yeah. that's very attractive. That's something that does seem to be it's relatively common. common. Yes. Yeah, well, that, a lot of them have this yellow start. There we go. Um, sorry, yeah, you want to? And uh, yeah, well, we can see though that that is such a pure white. That one, really pure but white, very but attractive you can bloom. See, yeah, but it is a very refreshing colour. Again, long stems, typical zoonotic leaves. Um, and again, you can see that it's shooting well from the bottom. I don't know whether you can see that. Take these yeah, off. Yeah, so I suppose that is a bit of the articulatum sort of. Uh, yeah. Well, they're going to grow. Growing out from the base. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Cut is there part. is there a slightly different sort of timing regime to them that we know of? Or I think they flower earlier. Okay. 
I think they flower earlier. And, and what's interesting is they seem to do well in, in, a, in, a, in a shaded area as opposed to the full sunlight. Okay. And yeah, something you recognise. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. In my glass house back at... Um, Back of base, I I find that they grow actually better in clay pots. Um, we were discussing actually before the video whether uh, Cliff may have used clay pots in Australia. Um, you perhaps thought he may have done, but not hundred percent certain. I can't, but, I can't so. really, really remember, but I know he grew his plants in considerably bigger pots than I've got in here. He was right, growing okay. them in eight inch pots, right. um, so they were filling a pot. And I have seen pictures of a plant which you know, are huge. Yeah, right, with, right, with, right. With hundreds of blooms on it. I yeah, I, I just tend to find that in clay pots with uh, the zone artics that I've got, uh, you're usually top watering and then it, it floods through, there's no saucer in the base, and I just wonder if that regime is maybe slightly better for them. It, it's a job to know, obviously all greenhouse conditions are always very different for every yes. person. But um, I found in plastic pots, I. I tend to get a few of the uh, the base leaves turn a bit yellow and then you just shed through. Uh, but in clay pots, I tend to get less of that. But it could be to do with compost. It could be any one of a myriad of things, conditions. But just for me, um, they tend to grow a bit better in a clay pot. But as I say, there are a myriad of reasons why that might be.